What's good family? So mash the like button, subscribe and lick off the bell. Wow! So kicking off right now. So, one of Yusuk's, Alexander Yusuk's sparring partners has spoken out on the situation and has essentially warned Anthony Joshua about the skill level of Yusuk's. He said the following. When I trained with Usyk, I arrived on Monday, and we did two-minute rounds on Monday. I'm here to do a job, but I don't want a headache, I don't want black eyes, and I don't want my career shortening with sparring. So Monday and Wednesday, I looked after myself. I boxed him, and I didn't really get hit very much, because I'm not here for that. Friday, they say, we want you to replicate Derek Chisora. And I was a bit tired. And I went, yeah, that's fine. Let's have a scrap. So Monday and Wednesday, I boxed him. Friday, I tried to fight him. And all three days, no matter what I did, he just had an answer for it all. He's got a special ability to work people out very quick. The one thing I noticed is that on the first day, on the first day, I might have hit him with a certain shot. On the second day, I might have hit him with another one. On the third... I might have hit him with another, but I never hit him with the same shot again. I never hit him with the same shot twice. Even with something as simple as a left jab, you don't hit him with it twice because he works it out very quickly. He moves the best. He moves better than Tyson Fury. But he's four stone lighter at the same time. Pound for pound, there's not much in it. But he just moves so well. I've not open sparred welterweights, but I've body sparred them and been in the ring with them. And he's as agile and as quick as a welterweight, a world class welterweight at that. That's how well he moves. He's a very special fighter. I think him and Tyson Fury are miles and miles away, miles above the most talented fighters I've ever shared the ring with. There you go then. So, those are the comments. Of one of Alexander Usyk's sparring partners. And essentially the big news article is about the fact that. Usyk's more skilled and more slippery than Tyson Scary. Now to an extent I do concur. In as much as he's smaller. Tyson Fury has long spindly legs. And he's quite gangly. Pound for pound wise Fury is much more gangly than Usyk. He's much less of an athlete than Usyk in my opinion. Fury's actually, I think he's an easier opponent. He's more cumbersome. He's more lumbersome. He's everywhere. He's so, isn't it? so big, like a big stiff tree that can move a bit. <laughs> Naturally, the, the, the bottom line physics of it, the bottom line physicality of it, six foot nine versus six foot three. Well, simple as that. That said, it works both ways. What Fury gives up in mobility and just sheer size being an obstacle, being big and in the way, i.e. easier to hit. What he gives up, he makes up for in weight. So yeah, he may be hit more because there's more of him to hit, but he is also will be able to absorb more of them impacts, in theory at least. Usyk, his bones are 2D. He hasn't got the density, in my opinion, to really... I think his bones are going to get shattered. If AJ goes in there and applies pressure and rattles off two three-punch combinations, Canelo, Canelo Alvarez style, your man, Alexander Usyk, is going to end up with splinters all through his bones, 100%. There's a reason there's weight divisions. And that re one of the key reasons is, if you don't want your bones splintering for you, you don't go in there with a man like AJ. Simple as that. That's why they got weight divisions. In, that's the number one reason. I spoke to someone from the commission. I said, Commission Don, why is there weight divisions? He said, listen, YB, the truth is, the best example I can give you why we made weight divisions, it's so people like AJ don't end up splintering and fracturing, giving multiple fractures to a bunch of small dudes like you sick. That's what he said, 100%. So... <laughs> <laughs> There's no doubt about that. Yeah? We don't want a whole load of men 
with hairline fractures from head to toe, from the blunt force trauma, the sheer vibrations that have been put through their body. That's what they said. <laughs> I'm just telling you what they told me, no doubt. Who can argue with that? Yeah? AJ, too dense. When he, if he thumps you, if he thumps you, yeah, with two or three of them shots at once, and then resets and thumps you another again, and resets and thumps you another again, what do you think I can do? In fact, let me tell you what it's not going to do. What it's not going to do, you ain't going to be coming back for more. You ain't going to be dancing around. People talk about dancing around. Oh, he's so slick. Let's see how slick he is when he's absorbed a few of them digs to the body for a few rounds. Do you understand that? You sick look slick dancing around against people like Gassiev, who just stood there with his earmuffs on. He, he ain't going to be looking so slick when someone who should be AJ digging him to the body. With big uppercuts and big hooks in combinations. Repetitive combinations at that. Dig, dig, bang. Reset. Double jab. Dig, dig, bang. Reset. Faint jab. Dig, dig, bang. Reset. That's what it should be. <laughs> in my opinion, that's how it should be. AJ should be eyeing him up. Fainting coming in. Watch the Joseph Parker fight. Watch it. Watch how AJ got in. That's a perfect execution. Double jab. Triple jab. Faint jab. The only thing that was missing because of the referee was the follow through. The two free punch combinations coming after it. And I think the best way to actually explain how Usyk should be broken down, watch. The best way, the best way of putting it together, yeah, how AJ should be fighting. Watch the Parker fight. That's the that's the long range to mid range. That's how he should close the distance. Double jab, triple jab, faint jab. Right hand on the end. And then if you want to see what should what should follow after that? Because AJ was perfectly cutting the ring off against Parker. Cutting the ring off. Closing distance with jabs and feints and right hands. And what should have followed after that? Watch what Alvarez does against Callum Smith. That's what should have been coming. But with a bit more volume. Alvarez loves to dig one massive shot. And that's not enough in my opinion. Big one-offs and enough. You need to put twos and threes together. So you want to get... AJ versus Parker from the long to mid range and then finishing off with Alvarez with two more on the end. Twos and threes. That's the perfect fighting machine in my opinion. And I've said it before, but AJ's made for that in as much as some fighters, a lot of fighters, like even even Lennox Lewis to an extent, I hate to say this, but it's the truth. Lennox Lewis, he had the double jab and triple jab and right hand. He had that mid to long range game, but he didn't have the devastating two or three punch combinations. He didn't have that. He didn't have the thudding hooks. He didn't. That's the. F it's not a. No one's perfect. What I'm saying, in my opinion, as far as being an athlete goes, AJ has the best. All the best. He's the ultimate athlete, in my opinion. He's, he's not a lot of often fighters are one way or the other. For example, Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson was all inside. He didn't have. To be fair, he had a pretty good jab, actually. That's because of his training was so good. Despite only being five for eight, he because <laughs> that just shows you how great some trainers can be. Despite being five for eight, Mike Tyson ended up out jabbing most tall people. That's how crazy his level of training was. But even so, Mike Tyson for the main couldn't fight on the back foot, and because of his size, whatever, whatever, he couldn't do that faint double jab and work his right hand and work the jab to butcher his opponent coming in. AJ's got the best of both. He's got that 80% Mike Tyson on the inside. And he's got that full long range game. I think AJ, AJ trained the right way. He's got the long range game with the best of them. Lennox. Vitali. Vlad. All of them man. He can compete at least. I actually think train the right way. He'd be, I think he'd be better than them at the long range game. And then train the right way. He wouldn't be as... Because of his size. He's never going to be able to out compete Mike Tyson on the inside. But... You're going to be able to get 95%, 90% of the way there, in my opinion. So what happens when you combine a Vitali Lennox Lewis jab and right hand game with a 95% Mike Tyson game? Oops. That's what we should be looking at right now. And what frustrates me is we saw AJ had that. Watch the Parker fight. He had that. I'm not saying it was perfect, but that was three years ago, don't forget. 2018, AJ had 
three and a half years ago, three and a half years ago, AJ had it down pat almost. Certainly, three and a half years of positive improvement on the Parker performance, his jab and right hand game and cutting the ring off game would now be perfect three and a half years later. No doubt about that. The inside game always needed more work, obviously, it's the hardest part of boxing. But that's what three and a half years is a long damn time. And unfortunately, I don't know what happened to that. We haven't seen a Parker performance since. Because even in the Ruiz 1 rematch, sorry, even in the Ruiz 1, AJ wasn't dominating with a jab. He wasn't driving it forward. Tony Sims had already left by then. So it was this whole low lead hand and touching the body. But a jab and stepping out kind of game. Even in the Ruiz 1 fight, that's what was going on. Even in the Poop Povetkin fight, AJ wasn't cutting the ring off. Why? He had that low lead hand and it was fruity to I don't know what happened, but after the Parker fight, I believe Tony Sims left. And that's when the whole low lead hand and touch of the body came along. Touch the body and step out. Whereas in the Parker fight, AJ weren't stepping out. He was touching the body and coming up top and putting a right hand on the end and cutting the ring off. But anyway, my point is, people are talking about all this speed and whatnot. They said the same thing about your man Parker. Parker was all speed. Don't forget that. You man have got a short memory. People were saying how quick Parker was. Oh, he's so quick. Quick as heavyweight ever. I've never seen a heavyweight as quick as Parker. So all that speed and all that slickness, I'm not saying, I'll be naive to say that Parker is as slick as Usyk is not. But it's all relative. Yeah, it's all relative. They ain't that slick. And I've told you before, in my last video, I've looked at Usyk, compared him to Floyd Mayover. Floyd Mayover is the ultimate slickness, in my opinion, defensively speaking. If AJ was going in there with someone as defensively and... Defense, offense, like Floyd Mayweather has great defensive offense, meaning that he can roll and pop you in the face with a right hand. <laughs> yeah, like with Alvarez. When Alvarez came marching forward against Floyd, Floyd would do some defensive thing and then pop him in, right in his face with a right hand, pull right hand or whatever. Usyk don't do that. Usyk, Usyk, yeah, don't have this super sleek, super silky defense and then pop you. He, he, right. I don't see you doing nothing super silky though with Usyk. He just straight up and down, if you ask me. And it's interesting that look at the Lomachenko fight. Lomachenko went in there with Tiafimo, and where was all this? Where was all that stuff they'd be talking about? Don't get me wrong. Towards the last part of the fight, he schooled Tiafimo, but my point is, Tiafimo weren't doing nothing special. All Tiafimo did went in there, big and strong, and with a good jab. And Lomachenko looked average for seven rounds. So. This whole hype, no one has ever big manned Floyd Mayover like that. No one's ever gone in there with Floyd Mayover and just stuck a jab in his face and he's been lost, not, not knowing what to do. Is my point. Usyk has been lucky enough, he hasn't gone in there with no young, young talented bucks. Lomachenko has, but in Tiafimo, but Usyk, who, what young on it buck has, Tif, has Usyk been in there with? Where you can sit there and say, why be... You know, you're being unfair here. Usyk schooled this real up-and-coming buck. For example, I would give Usyk ratings if in a year or two, when Lawrence Okoli is going to become undisputed, in my opinion. Lawrence Okoli under Shane McGuigan will become undisputed. If and when that happens, I'll, I'm going to be pushing for Okoli to call out Usyk. I'm going to be actively doing that, even though it ain't going to, ain't going to pay me no money. Yeah, Talking about them fights don't make me no money. But on principle... I want to see that fight. I'm going to be... Um, I'm going to be campaigning for... When Okoli goes under spirit, I'm going to be campaigning for him to call out Usyk and for that fight to happen. Eddie Hearn, put your hand in your pocket for a, pro for a proper fight. 100%. That there will be a proper fight for who's truly the king of the cruiserweights. Because the people that Usyk beat, he never beat an up-and-coming buck like that. He beat a bunch of random bumps. No good. Let's see Usyk... Because for me, Usyk and Akoli is a bit like Lomachenko and, T and Tiafimo. It's that kind of fight. Let's see you do that. Let's see you go in there with a young buck and do your business. Because all you've beat is a bunch of average bums, truth be known. The whole cruiserweight division, and that's why I'm so confident Akoli will cut through them all. Number one, because he's that good. But number two, they're all just average bums, in my opinion. I think Akoli will do the same to all the other bums out there, Bradys and them, man, as he did to Glowowski. And I think that 
Genuinely, I think Akoli under Shane McGuigan two years from now will not use it spark out for him. Same way he knocked out Glowowski. Yeah, we'll see how slippery he is when he's in there in front of Akoli. Because for me, being being slippery in front of a bunch of bums is one thing. Being slippery in front of Akoli is a completely different game. There's levels to this game, folks. Yeah. And I think it's I think it's convenient that Usyk ran off the heavyweight when Akoli was just getting his lipstick out. Yeah? Akoli just finished getting his lipstick out. And now all of a sudden your man's Usyk missing. Conveniently. Usyk didn't make no defensive of the, of the undisputed. And we know why. Because he ran off. That's the truth of it. And if I was Akoli, I'd start saying that. I'd say, listen. Akoli. I mean, I'd say, listen. Usyk, you, ran, you best run up there as well. Yeah? You best run up there. Because me and Shane, we want your bad. Yeah? Me and Shane have just brushed our lipsticks off for you. No doubt. 100%. But anyway. We can talk about this. All of you six sparring partners can come out and talk about the sparring and whatever else. End of the day. We'll see how slick the sparring is. We'll see how oh, people run. Oh, well, he's better than Tyson Fury. Who said Tyson Fury is any good? That's another thing. I'll just give you a big thing about Floyd Mayover, yeah? Floyd Mayover is the slick one. That's what I gauge on a gauge of one to Floyd Mayweather. Floyd, Fury doesn't do any of this stuff either. I've never seen Fury do some slippery stuff and counter punch. I've never seen Fury genuinely, seriously counter punch. Never seen him do it. Despite going in there with people like Wilder, who's sloppy, still didn't see Fury counter punching. I saw him getting caught and knocked out though. <laughs> you understand? In that first fight. Despite how sloppy Wilder is, Fury still couldn't counter. He ended up getting knocked Spark out instead. That's how slippery your man Fury is. Oops. But to be fair to Fury, at least he's been in there with decent people like Wilder to an extent. Your man Usyk hasn't even got someone like Wilder on his resume. To be knocked out, if that makes sense. It's all well and good knocking Wilder but or knocking Fury, but Usyk, you don't have a Wilder on your resume. You don't have any of these dudes on there, because it's not, it's not really your fault as such, because your division's so weak, but either way, your fault or not, to get these kind of accolades you're getting, oh, he's the best, better than Fury, and he's better than this, he's better than that, he's the best ever, you have to have done something, and he hasn't. And it's not even, for me, about the fact that his opponents haven't been all that. If your opponents aren't all that, like when Mike Tyson was in there with people who were not all that, he knocked them out. Do you understand? That's what you do with people who aren't all that. You knock them out. That cruiserweight we're talking about. Usyk ain't been doing no knocking out. Usyk's been doing 12 round 50-50s. That's what he'd be doing. If you're that great. See, bear in mind, we're not talking about 140 pounders here. We're talking about 210 215 pound men. The, don't forget as well, the U6, yeah, the cruiserweights really, they're the old heavyweights. U6 will weigh in about 210, 215 for a cruiserweight fight. They're heavyweight. heavyweight. Mike Tyson was only 217 in his prime. Oops. There's no excuse. No excuse to be going 12 rounds every day, every night. And that's why, that's why my man, yeah, what do we know? U6 went in there with Glowacki, what did he do? He went 12 rounds. Oops, your man Usyk so good. He went 12 rounds with Glowacki. What did my dog Okoli do? And, and Shane McGuigan. They smoked Glowacki's nuts for him. Smoked him for him. Didn't win a round and got smoked in round seven. Yeah, that's what we do to them average dons. They get knocked out. And I believe Okoli under Shane McGuigan is going to knock them all out. Bradis. All the ones that your man. Usyk went life and death and 12 rounds with, I believe, Akoli and Shane McGuigan are going to knock them all out. Why? Because they want it like that. They like, Because they want true greatness. True greatness isn't, well, I'm truly great, but I'm going to go 50, 50, 12 rounds. No. Shane McGuigan and Akoli plan to knock everyone out, and rightfully so. That's what greatness is. Not, well, I'm super great, I'm the best boxer ever, but I'm going to go 12 rounds with bums. Nothing great about that. Ain't no one trying to, ain't no one trying to big that up, but for some reason, it's weird. When Floyd Mayweather was getting 12 round wins here, at 147, 
no one, no one, people were reluctant to call him the greatest, but yet these goofies come along, like Lomachenko and Yusik, and everyone wants to ride him. I wonder why that is. Oops. <laughs> yeah, obviously. <laughs> we know why that is, but I, just find, I find it super suspect myself. How can you diss Floyd? For me, I think they're all boring. I'm, I'm going to be consistent. I'm not going to ride certain dons because they fit certain characteristics. Me, Floyd's boring, Usyk boring, Lomachenko boring. Don't tell me, but the way some of you mans are, you'll diss Floyd and then, oh, no, nah, no. Nah. Usyk, this, that, the other. Usyk's is boring and, and worse than Floyd. At least Floyd, you can watch and think, wow, he does some cool stuff. I've never seen nothing super slick, no, nothing super slick with Usyk, to be fair. Not as... Yeah, he does something slick, but I've never been truly amazed. When Floyd was in there with Alvarez, that was amazing. Simple as that. So, no one's beat Alvarez like that. No one. Yeah, he was young, but he was still 50 fights in. And as far as sports go, 23 years old, really, as a man... Is when the men peak. Men peak at 23, 24 years old. Everything over that, in terms of I'm talking about genetically speaking. This 30 years old, yes, you can be strong then, but don't forget, humans used to die at about 25 years old. 20, 22, 23 is when you're actually at your peak. Especially when you've been training since you was 8 years old. But anyway, we'll see what happens. You've heard the hype from the sparring partners. I'm just ready for this fight now anyway. Either way, I'm ready for it. Because I believe AJ is going to either Ruiz 2, the life out of Usyk, or he's going to knock him out. Either way, it's a win-win. That's why, if you've got any money, AJ points or AJ to win. Put a bit on both, in my opinion. AJ points, AJ overall win. I wouldn't bet on the KO myself. Well, I'm not doing it anyway. I've got points and I've got overall. The KO... I haven't seen enough to back it. I would do. If I'd seen them, if I was in the camp, <laughs> you best believe. They wouldn't, I'll tell you now. If the YB was in the camp, if the number two trainer in the world was in the camp, I, I promise you, I swear on my own life, I wouldn't bet. There wouldn't be no points bet, and there wouldn't be no overall win bet. It'd be straight KO bet within the first six rounds. That's what I'd be doing, 100%. Yeah? And I'd, I'd even ring the bookies up and ask them, listen, I want to put a special bet on. I want to put a bet that his head's going to come flying off. Yeah, like one of them toys. Woo, you know, go, go spurting off. AJ, listen, AJ would be hitting him so hard to the body, yeah? That he'd be hitting him so hard to the body, his organs would start bubbling up. From, from the friction. From all of his organs sloshing around, yeah? His organs would be doing so much sloshing, the sheer friction would make him bubble up. And his, his head would go popping off in the end. Yeah? AJ would touch him to the belly and his head would go pop! <laughs> go flying in the air like a football. 100%. That's what would happen to him. No doubt. 